we have uh, constantly made the distinction between heaven and earth that God is in heaven and he placed us upon this earth along with his Holy Spirit. And so his work continues in this earth realm. Um, that work that signifies that God is good, those original works that God did from the uh, foundation of the world when he created everything. Every time God would create something, it was good. That was before it was tarnished, before it was corrupted by sin, before man chose to rebel against God. When God made everything, he made it righteous. So the image of righteousness, the image of how God wanted the earth to look, how the earth to function, you have to look at what he did from the beginning before there was sin. After there was sin, now you have an issue because there is corruption and there's death. You know, man chose death. So there has to be a death cycle, a process of death. And that in that cycle of death is that where um, you are lured away, enticed in lust by your own desires. Lust breeds um, sin. And when sin is is full blown, it brings forth death. The Bible says that now there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. There is no condemnation the bible says it says for the the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death so there's a law of life a process of life which is found in christ jesus the bible says he that hath the son hath life so in this earth realm where death is working you choose jesus to receive life to bring you into life and to bring you into the righteous state and also by the, the operation of God's wisdom to keep us uh, walking in that cycle of life, that process of life instead of that process of death. And so um, that is governed by wisdom. The Bible talks about how wisdom is justified of her children. So there's two types of wisdom, godly wisdom, which leads to life, and uh, demonic wisdom, which is perverted wisdom, which leads to death. And so wisdom, the Bible says, is justified of her children. In other words, the, the wisdom that you are partaking of, that's why it was, it was seen as partaking of, of the, the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil or partaking of the, the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that was partaking of the, the, the choice, choosing the devil's wisdom, that evil is of the devil. We understand that. And so that the, the, the wisdom associated with that, which is a perverted wisdom, is what it is what the devil spoke to Eve in the beginning when he enticed her that she was drawn away from her by her own lust and she was deceived he said that you shall not surely die that God knows that in the day that you partake that you'll be like God's knowing both good and evil and so that it'll be your choice to choose what is good and evil. Well, that God said that God's wisdom was that in the day that you eat, you shall surely die. The devil said something opposite of, of God, which was a perverted wisdom, which enticed her. In other words, it, it opened her eyes that evil was appealing. She said it was a tree desired to make one wise. And so that that wisdom looked inviting to her, even though it led to death. OK, and so there's two types of wisdom. God's wisdom, if you if you listen to God's words and hearken to his words in God's words is his wisdom. Amen. Or wisdom is God's way of operating and his way of um, building his his way of bringing forth Fruit is his is his wisdom. Amen. 
And so in James, the book of James, chapter three, verse 13, it says, who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. So your your conduct, your way of life, your behavior will show what wisdom you're operating by. It says, but if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. And so it says that if you are full of bitter envy and self-seeking, you know, that if you're about self, if you're about pride, if you're jealous, if you are uh, envious, then that that behavior and that that mindset and that and that heart posture shows that you're operating by that demonic wisdom. It says, but the wisdom, verse 17, that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now, the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. So the wisdom which is from God comes down from above. The Bible says, if any man lacks wisdom, let him act of God who gives liberally. God is in heaven. God is above. Above is not only a location because we're talking about a, 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 a spiritual. We're talking spiritually. Above is not only that God is above like location, but above is like um, um, preferred, higher, chosen. So that which is of God, God is in heaven, that is chosen above what is beneath. Amen. And so let's read it again and try to soak it in. It says, who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom, the wisdom which is associated with bitter envy and self-seeking, that wisdom does not descend from above. But it is earthly. It is sensual or sense based. It is demonic. For where envy and self seeking exist, confusion in every evil thing are there. You know, Jesus, the Bible talked about when Jesus ministered upon this earth, the Bible says that everyone was astonished. They were literally astonished astonished at his doctrine or his teaching because he did not um, teach like the scribes and the Pharisees, but he taught with authority. Amen. In other words, his authority came from heaven and, and he would confront that matter when they asked him by well, what authority are you doing these things and teaching these things? He says, I'll ask you a question. He says, the baptism of John, was it from heaven or was it of man? You know, was it of heaven above or was it of man of the earth beneath? And they refused to answer because they say within themselves, if we say from heaven, then then they'll he'll ask us, then why didn't we believe it? The authority which is of God comes down from above, from heaven where God is. The Bible says, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Heaven is the seat of authority, the seat of God's government, the place of God's throne. Authenticity, that it is right, that it is righteous. That, that, that justice comes from um, above, in heaven not from beneath. In other words, the earth needs that from which is from above. Amen. To be direction and light and wisdom that that the wisdom of God does not originate from beneath. It does it does not come from the earthly realm. It comes from above and it shines and it 
descends into this earth realm. Above, the Bible says that, that God's mountain is in the north, Mount Zion. The place of God is above. Amen. God says it this way. He says that my ways are not your ways, neither are your thoughts my thoughts. As far as the heavens are above the earth are my ways from your ways and my thoughts than, than your thoughts. As the rain and snow comes down from above and returns not thither, so is my word. It does not return unto me void, but it prospers. It succeeds in the thing for which I sent it. Amen. So that which is quality, that which is life, that which has authority, the authority of God comes down from above and it displaces the demonic wisdom of this earth realm. And you have to humble yourself to receive the wisdom of God and to walk in the wisdom of God. Why? Because that the wisdom which is from beneath, it promotes pride. Look at it this way. If you're holding on to something that you call wisdom, which is not God's wisdom, it would be prideful for you to hold on to it and not to receive the, the wisdom which is from God. For you to resist the wisdom which is from God. You would have to be prideful. Amen. Because something far superior has appeared. The wisdom of God, which is called foolishness to man and which is called foolishness to this world. Amen. And so God's wisdom comes down from above. The Bible says that every um, good gift and perfect gift comes down from above from the father of lights in whom there's no variableness nor shadow of turning. Amen. So the picture of righteousness is heaven. The picture of perfection is, is heaven. And who is in heaven but God the Father and Jesus. Amen. Who promotes heaven in this earth but the Holy Spirit manifests the righteousness of God against the face of lies and darkness and destruction and death. The Holy Spirit executes judgment against all unrighteousness it brings he brings forth the wisdom of god he shows that god's wisdom is superior and by the holy spirit god's wisdom defeats the wicked wisdom which is of the world which causes destruction which people who operate in the wisdom of the world they are self seeking they're full of envy they're full of jealousy they're full of strife and those works, amen, or if you want to call it that type of fruit is not the fruit of God, is not the fruit of righteousness, amen. It says, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure. So that means that the wisdom which is of Satan is corrupted. Then peaceable, it promotes peace, is gentle. Willing to yield, that's that's the love of God, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. That's why Jesus had such a problem with the scribes and Pharisees, because they were hypocrites. Jesus would call them out. He said, hypocrite, you wash the outside of the cup, but the inside is dirty. You're like tombs, whitewashed tombs full of dead men's bones, that you put burdens on people that you would not lift one finger to lift or ease that, that burden, that, that you do all these works, but you deny the weightier matters of mercy. Amen. He says, go and find out what it means that I desire mercy and not sacrifice. Amen. So that the, there's two competing wisdoms in this earth realm. One is demonic and one is godly. Godly wisdom comes down from above. Now it says, now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Amen. And so what that means is that we are at peace with God. We don't strive against God and we don't resist the Holy Spirit or we should not resist the Holy Spirit. We should not quench the Holy Spirit. 
to, that we're supposed to yield to the Holy Spirit, who is the spirit of wisdom that we, we taught in Isaiah. I believe chapter 11, it says that the, the, the spirit of God rested upon Jesus. It was speaking of Jesus, but it's the same Holy Spirit that we have. The spirit of wisdom and revelation, counsel and might and knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. He makes us of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And so the spirit of wisdom, we said even last night, we talked about um, Ephesians chapter one, uh, starting at about verse 15. It says that God would give us a spirit of revelation and wisdom in the knowledge of him, the eyes of our understanding being enlightened that we may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the, the riches of his uh, in, inheritance in the saints. Amen. That the spirit of God is a, the, the spirit of wisdom. Amen. So if you want to talk about operating in the wisdom of God, you have to receive the Holy Spirit. And you have to receive what the Holy Spirit illuminates or reveals as wisdom and knowledge and understanding. You, you cannot um, resist it or strive against it by holding on to that which is earthly, that which is sensual, and that which is demonic. Amen. When you have Christians who prefer that which is of the flesh, I can tell you that they are operating by demonic wisdom. When you have Christians who um, do, do not want the, the, the manifestation of the Spirit or the operation of the Spirit, or those that deny the right of the Holy Spirit to be a consuming fire within them, to, to burn up those things that are not convenient, you know, as, as Paul says, that just because all things are lawful, he says all things are lawful, but all things are not expedient. Every, everything is not good. Well, that's called chaff, that the, the fire, when the Lord baptized you with the Holy Spirit and with fire, he burns up the chaff, amen, so that he can bring into his barn, his garner, that which is good, the wheat, what is the wheat? Wheat represents the, 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 the staff of life from which you make bread, amen. So it's talking about that, that, that which is left is the life that God has for you. He will burn up those excess things which take away from the life that God has called you to live. And certainly sin and fleshly living take away from the life that God has called you to live. Amen. And so one of the main things in this ministry that we try to teach is that the salvation is the, 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 the process of eternal life. In other words, when you have received Jesus to be born again, now he gives you a life. And that life is revealed by the Holy Spirit. And that is the wisdom of God. And it promotes love and passion for the Lord. Because Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my words and keep my commandments. And the way that we are able to keep the Lord's words and his commandments is by the power of the Holy Spirit and also by hearing and, and receiving from the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so that is a, a process of salvation. So we are in, in communion with the Lord and we are receiving what the Lord reveals and we are loving it and we are not resisting it. That is the process. The Bible says in Psalms 37, it says, delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart that you're to, to commit your way to him. Amen. And so, and, and he will bring it to pass. You, you commit, your, you put your will under and let your will, you're like Jesus. Jesus says, not my will, Father, but your will be done. That's how he obeyed the Father. He says, not my will, but your will be done. He says, if it's possible, let this cup be taken from me. But if not, he said, that is not my will, Father, is your will. And so that is a crushing. You know, Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane sweated drops of blood, 
striving against sin in order to do the will of the Father by the help of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so that's what God has called us. He called us to deny earthly wisdom and to receive the wisdom which is of God. Even if those who are worldly will scoff at the wisdom which is from God. Amen. And so the Bible talks about those who mock and those who scoff. Those who mock and scoff, they mock the wisdom of God because they are prideful and they say beneath is better instead of that which is above. Amen. So God is above is not just talking about a spiritual location. God is in what we call spiritual north. Amen. That on the sides of the north, his mountain is Mount Zion. It is located north. It is above. But it's not just location. It's talking about quality. It's talking about that which is chosen. God's wisdom is chosen. God's wisdom is preferred. Amen. And so you need to know the distinction between God's wisdom and that which is earthly. Amen. And so in St. John, St. John chapter three, St. John chapter three, and let's begin with verse St. John chapter 3, let's look at verse 30. This is, this is John the Baptist, and he says something very interesting about himself and about the Lord Jesus. He says about Jesus, he must increase, but I must decrease. He who comes from above is above all. He who is of the earth is earthly. And speaks of the earth. He who comes from heaven is above all. Amen. So he's speaking about Jesus and he's comparing and contrasting Jesus to himself. He says, I told you I wasn't the one that there was one that was coming after me that is preferred. I said that which from above is preferred is preferred before me whose shoes I'm not uh, I'm, I'm not even entitled to carry. Amen. I must decrease. He must increase that he is from above and that which is from above. The one that who's from above is above all. Amen. So heaven, you need to understand heaven rules above the earth. Heaven from above rules above the earth. Any other type of mindset is antichrist. If you think that earth is the center of the universe and that earth rules above all, that's the antichrist spirit. That's 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 demonic. That's the devil wanting to have a kingdom whose base is from this earth. Amen. He wants to pervert the souls of men to that their hearts would be turned against the Lord. The history of mankind, that's what it is. The, the, the history of mankind is whether we would be for the Lord or against him. Would we be for his kingdom or against his kingdom? Would be, we be, um, our hearts be soft and pliable and we would be agreeable unto the Lord, consenting to the fact that he is Lord and his wisdom is supreme or would we be in rebellion and opposition against the Lord? Use of the devil to fight against the, the kingdom of God, to try to pervert the, the wisdom of God and to suppress the wisdom of God. The Bible says that um, the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and wickedness and against those who suppress the truth of righteousness with unrighteousness. Amen. And so that those that the wisdom, which is demonic, tries to suppress the wisdom of God. That's why have you ever wondered why is there such opposition against the gospel? If, if the messages were equal, if the message of the gospel was equal, 
with, with the message that the devil would put out, why would the devil try to suppress the message of God? Because he knows that that which is from above is superior, which speaks of Jesus, amen, that those who would receive Jesus would receive his name, would receive his power, his anointing, his authority, and, and God's wisdom, which the Bible says that the wisdom of God brings the wisdom which is of the world to nothing. It destroys. God says, I will destroy the wisdom which is of the world with, with my wisdom. Amen. So God brings the wisdom of the world to nothing. He shows that it is empty, vanity. He shows that it is folly, that it is futile. Amen. That, that it is of nothing. It has no power to save. It has no power to to deliver. It only puffs up. That's why it's called unleavened. It, 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 it puffs up. It corrupts it doctrine. Amen. And God warns against um, that 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 um, unsound doctrine. God God warns against. He says, uh, don't you know that a little leaven leaveneth the lump? Amen. And so the devil wants to mix his wisdom with that which is of God so that he can corrupt it or pervert it because he has no power over God's wisdom. God's wisdom is pure. God's wisdom is not corrupted. It's peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated. Amen. It is, it is, it is perfect. Amen. And full of good fruits. And it brings peace. Remember what peace is. We have peace with God. Peace on earth, goodwill toward man for those who will receive Jesus. It's like the when um King Saul, you know, he was refused by God when he disobeyed the Lord. And God said he was taking the kingdom from him. It was a process. It took time. God anointed David to be king. And King Saul and his son Jonathan were killed in war just as God had prophesied that he would not continue. And so David was anointed king and they unified, they unified Israel and Judah under his throne and his authority. David was a type of Jesus. And then those that were associated, affiliated with King Saul, they had an opportunity to come to David and say, we submit to the wisdom that you operate in. We submit to the authority which God has given you, thus making peace, unifying the kingdom. So we have peace with God. We are one with the Lord. We don't strive against the Lord. We don't strive against his wisdom. Amen. And so that we are reconciled unto God. And so that's what the Bible says, that the, 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 the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace to those who make peace. The fruit of righteousness, that which is right, that which comes forth and shows that it is of the Lord and is of his wisdom is planted. The harvest of righteousness is sown in peace to those who make peace peace. We bring others. We are ministers of reconciliation. We bring others unto Christ. The Bible says that he is reconciling all unto himself and that God has given him power. There's a power at work by the Holy Spirit to subdue all things unto Christ. Amen. Thus making peace, the Bible says. Amen. So we are not of that rebellious spirit, which was of the devil, which operates by that demonic wisdom. If you choose that demonic wisdom, it, it causes you to be opposed to God's wisdom and opposed to God. That which is of the earth is earthly. That which is from above is above all. So that's why Jesus would always say that he was sent from the father. That nobody, no one has seen God at any time except the one, Jesus, who was sent by the Father. Why is that so important? Because he came down from above. That which is above is preferred. Amen. And so it shows God's authority backs up that which is of him. Amen. 
And so the fact that God sent Jesus and God would confirm that he had sent Jesus by the works that Jesus did. Jesus says, if you did, if you do not believe my words, you should have believed the works that I do, that I am of the father and the father is one with me. You say, what, what, what does that mean? Jesus did the same works that God had done by the authority that came from heaven and by the wisdom that came from heaven. When God made everything right, there was no sickness or no disease. Amen. There was more than enough. There was, there was plenty. There was peace. There was life. Everywhere that Jesus would go, he would heal the sick, raise the dead. He would work righteousness and he would destroy the works of the devil. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost. Remember, it's the Holy Ghost that is going to, to, to show forth righteousness and execute judgment against unrighteousness. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. He went about doing good. You can finish that by saying he went about doing good works. Um, he He... It, how God anointed Jesus with Nazareth, the Holy Ghost, and with power went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Why? Because God was with him. So Jesus said that you, if you did not believe my words, you should believe the works, that the works were born of God, that they came from the authority. In other words, that unless you had that authority of one that was sent by the Lord, then you would not have been able to do the works of God. The Holy Spirit bared witness that those were the works of God by providing the power and the anointing to destroy the works of the devil, to remove wickedness, to remove unrighteousness. And so the wisdom of God is, is like um, the light. You, 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 you have to agree that righteous is righteous and unrighteous is unrighteous. That's why it's hard to receive if you are double-minded or you are opposed to God's wisdom. You have to understand that sickness is not God's will. Jesus only did the will of the Father. That's why God anointed him. Anoint To be anointed is this. It is to be um, um, to to be um, have the uh, anointing oil upon God says the Bible says because Jesus he loved righteousness and he hated unrighteousness or wickedness therefore God his God has anointed him with the oil of gladness above his fellows and so just like God separated the light from the darkness there is a difference God says there's a difference between righteous and unrighteous. There's a difference between holy and unholy. And so heaven backed up Jesus. God gave Jesus the authority that the works that he did were righteous. When Jesus ministered upon this earth, God worked, God verified, God confirmed that those were his works and those, and it was righteousness to undo wicked works. Amen. Heaven backed him up. He walked. He talked as one with authority. And the fact that the power was available from the Lord showed that God had sent him. Number two, it showed that he was one with the father, that 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 he was one with the father and the father was one with him. And that's the same way that we operate. We don't strive against the Lord. So we have to agree with the Lord that that which is a work of the devil, such as sickness and disease. Again, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. He went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. So we have a record. It's not like you don't know what Jesus did. Jesus healed the sick. Amen. So that sickness was unrighteousness. God anointed Jesus to bring forth righteousness. It was operated by the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so it was backed up. The Bible says that that is the agreement, the oneness. There is oneness between the Father and the Word, who is Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. 
that these three are one and that they operate as one. Amen. So God worked good works. Remember, God is an eternal God. We're down here in time, but by our faith, it can connect us to the glory where there is no space of time. That's why you can raise the dead. Because with God, God is an eternal God. Amen. And he, the Bible says that sufficient for the day is the evil thereof. Therefore, what we're supposed to do is to redeem the time because the days are evil. Amen. So when a person is healed, he's brought back into a righteous, blessed state. Amen. And so even if people say there's not enough time, there's no time, God, by by his power, by his anointing, he can turn that thing around. Amen. He can renew your youth. He can strengthen you. He, your latter days can be greater than your beginning days. Amen. God can, God can do that because he is an eternal God. But for you to receive those types of signs, wonders, miracles, and healings, you have to know the difference between righteousness and unrighteousness. The Bible says Jesus himself took our sins in his body on a tree that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. First Peter 2.24. That so righteousness is associated with that which is right, such as healing. We're supposed to live for righteousness. Amen. We're not supposed to contend with God, strive against God, whether sickness is Un, un, unrighteous. We know that sickness is unrighteous. We're not supposed to think that sickness is righteous. Therefore, you, that you're double-minded. You're not being one with God's wisdom. You're not being one with God's will. God's will is to wipe it out. Amen. By the power of God, by your faith, your faith connects you to God. Your faith from your heart, your heart is called your spirit connects you with God's heart and his will and his desire for you. God's will and his desire for you is found in the word of God. It is called the good report. Who hath believed our report? So that good report has to be believed, not the evil report. Amen. So to receive from God, you have to be one with him, one with his word. You have to embrace, cherish, count as precious his word. Amen. And to become one with that word in agreement. The Bible says, how can two walk together unless they be agreed? Amen. So God has good things for you. The Bible says, I know the thoughts and plans I have for you. Thoughts and plans of good and not evil to give you a future and a hope. So God says, I know, don't try to tell me what, I, what my will is for you. I know the thoughts. I know the plans I have for you. They are good and not evil. And so don't try to apply evil to God. Amen. God is good. And Bible, the Bible says how you see the Lord is very, very important. The Bible says that to, to the merciful, God shows himself as merciful. To to the ones who sees God as merciful, the Bible says he will show himself merciful. To the one who sees God as good, he will show himself good. But if you see God as hard and harsh, you have a will. You have a choice. You tell God what you desire, what you want. It's like the parable of the talents, the one that hid his talent in the ground. The reason he did that, he says, I knew you were a hard, harsh man that that you you reap where you did not sow. Well, that's not God. Amen. But that's how he saw him. And that's why he did not receive the increase. Amen. That's why he did not um, apply himself to receive the blessing from the Lord. God gives and God blesses. Amen. So that which God gives you, when you um, use it in the, the service of God, you allow God to touch it, 
God can bless it. Amen. But when you try to put it in your own power, it is subject to the laws of this earth realm, those natural laws of decay, those 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 law of corruption. Amen. And so that's why the Bible says, do not lay up for yourselves of treasures upon this earth where moth and rust and dust and thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. Amen. And in other words, that which is in the eternal realm, when when you seek first the kingdom of God and his his righteousness, God is able to touch with that which is eternal, the glory, so that it can increase. Amen. The blessing upon this earth realm comes from God. If anything is to be blessed in this earth realm, this earth realm natural state is to be under corruption and decay. And so that's why we desperately need the Lord. The Bible says the whole earth is groaning, waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. We we are desiring to be clothed, the Bible says, in glory. And we groan even within ourselves. Anything good, as Jesus says, is of God, comes from the Father. If you want something to be blessed, God has to touch it. You you cannot deny God his right to operate in this earth realm. You know, don't be like Nabal. When, When David was on the run from King Saul, he sent a message to Nabal who, who had well, many um, sheep uh, at Mount Carmel, at Carmel, the Bible says, and that he, he asked Nabal that if there was anything in his hand that he could do to, to, to help David and his man. But remember, David was not only taking care of himself, but people began to join themselves unto David. David had first 300 and it began to grow to 600 men that became mighty men. And David had protected Nabal's shepherds. And he thought that because he had shown the man only good and kindness and had been a bodyguard and protected his shepherds, that that Nabal would act in kind. And he asked Nabal that if there's anything in your hand that to, to give us that we would receive because we only done you good. Nabal's response to David was, who is David? He says, there's a lot of slaves that have escaped from their masters. I don't, I don't know this David. And why should I take of mine and give to him? So there's a lot there. I won't get into all of it, but you, you see the spirit of the world, the spirit of mammon says that everything in this earth realm is is ours instead of the Lord. The Bible says that the God is Lord of heaven and earth. And even though he leased out the earth to man, he is still looking for those who will be one with him and to give unto him fruits of righteousness. Amen. That those who would agree to, to worship God, to serve God, the Bible says, to be his people. The Bible says we are of the circumcision, that's God's people, who worship God in the spirit, that have no confidence in the flesh, that's in this earthly realm and in the flesh, and have our boast that in the Lord Jesus. We are the people of God. The Bible says these are the ones that God is looking for. Jesus said that God is spirit. He's searching, looking for those who will worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. These are the people of God, worshipers, who agree to serve God with while we're in this earth realm. But Nabal said, no, everything in this earth realm, that it was mine is mine. So he denied God the right, amen, to bless him, amen. He says that the blessing was already mine. So so he was refuting the fact that God is the one who blesses. He refused to help David, amen. And so to make a long story short, that he he had something like a, a stroke, Amen. That that he was caught up in the mechanisms of God instead of being a blessing unto the kingdom of God. David represent the kingdom of Jesus, a type and a shadow. Instead of being a blessing, he said, no, it's mine. It's mine. And I will not bless David. Amen. So 
God is from above. You need to know that. God's wisdom is from above. Amen. It is introduced into this earth realm. Amen. And when that which is of the Lord is introduced into this earth realm, you have to make room for the Lord. In other words, you have to receive it as a gift. And that which is a gift, every good gift, every perfect gift comes down from above, from the Father of lights. So when that is introduced, the wisdom of God is introduced into this earth realm. It must be received willingly as a gift. You have to make Room for the wisdom of God by um, putting down the wisdom which is of the earth, which is beneath, which is sensual and demonic. Amen. You have to say that that which is from above is preferred. It is chosen. Amen. And you have to humble yourself to receive the, the, the wisdom of God. Amen. And so. When God would introduce that which is from above into this earth realm, man's response to it will show who he was um, devoted to. Amen. For instance, Jesus came down from above. That if you would receive Jesus, it would show that you're being drawn by the Holy Spirit. Jesus says, no man comes unto me unless he's drawn by the Father. Amen. And so the father would draw by the Holy Spirit. So Jesus came down from above into this earth realm. And even now we have to choose Jesus by laying down our life, our earthly, worldly life in receiving eternal life from the Lord. Amen. And so when when we receive Jesus who came down from above, we are choosing, we're saying God's Wisdom is greater. God's way is best. Amen. And we are rejecting the wisdom and the ways which are of the world. The, the, the type and the shadow of that was the, the manna in the Old Testament that the people would murmur and they complain and they lusted after the flesh. And so that, that is literally what they, they lusted after. They lusted after Egypt. They lusted after the ways of Egypt. They, even though in, in Egypt, they were in bondage. It was called the house of bondage. They were in captivity, but they longed for that captivity. Egypt is a type of the world. Amen. And so they lusted after the onion, the leeks, the flesh pot. They, they lusted after flesh. And so God gave them manna. What is manna? The bread of heaven. The angel's food. It came down from above. God did not call it manna. They call it manna. The word manna means, what is this? In other words, they had contempt. They, 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 they had a disdain for the manna, even though it was from above. It is what God provided. The Bible says it was a light wafer that it would come down like the frost every morning it would descend like the frost and that that it was um like uh, honey and carry coriander seed amen and the bible says that that they disdained that which came down from above that and and they used that when in the in the New Testament in St. John chapter 6, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. I'm the actual bread that came down from heaven. I am the one that represents life. He says, unless you enter into covenant with me, that that's what he meant when he says that unless you eat of my flesh or drink of my blood. So he's talking about his body was broken for us and his blood was shed for us. That's the Lord's table. He says, unless you enter into covenant with me by receiving me as Lord, then you have no part with me. Amen. And so in the Old Testament, they rejected the bread of life, the bread which came down from above. They lusted after flesh. God said, I'll give you quail. God piled up quail three feet high. He says, I'm going to make you eat it till it comes out of your nose. Amen. God was showing 
that the flesh does not satisfy. That the, there, the, the Bible says that you have to despise the flesh. And this is where, this is where what Christians need to learn. What, what God was trying to show is that the flesh was not anything to be desired. Amen. So we're talking flesh. We're talking carnality. We're talking going after lust, which leads to sin and death. We're talking about those, those things, those, those pleasures, those things which separate us from God. Amen. Going after those lusts separate us from God. The, what the Lord was trying to teach was that you should have an a appetite for the things which come from above. You, you, you may not have the mindset yet, but if you will allow the Lord to teach you, he could renew your mind so that you can prove what is the good, acceptable and perfect will of God is. In, in other words, if you have a carnal mindset, the Bible says that the carnal mind does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are spiritually discerned, amen, that the carnal mind is not subject to the things of God, neither can it be, amen. So if you have a carnal mindset that you will reject the things of God, God says that I want you to despise that which is of the flesh. And I want you to be devoted and have love and affection for that which is from above, that which is from the Lord. Amen. And so the Lord would train, he would teach, he would try to remove those fleshly appetites and, and, and to teach and to train for us to have an appetite for that which is of the Lord. It's just like the wisdom which, which comes from God. If you're puffed up, the Bible says that knowledge puffs up. And it's talking about the knowledge of man. It will, it will puff you up. Amen. And that is that corrupting factor. It's, it's like yeast. It's like leaven. That, that knowledge without the Lord puffs up. Amen. But that which is from God, it takes meekness. It takes humility. God resists the proud, but he gives grace unto the humble. You must humble yourself as a child to enter into the kingdom of God. You have to humble yourself to receive the wisdom of God. You have to let go of the wisdom which is of the world. You have to instinctively know that God's ways are right, that God's ways are above, and let God renew you, train you, Renew your mind until you get to the place where your heart is joined unto the Lord. Amen. And so that's the message. Be the difference between God's wisdom and the devil's wisdom. The devil's wisdom separates you from God. God's wisdom will bring you and 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 and, and adhere you to the Lord. Amen. And also God's wisdom will um, help you to reign and rule in this life over that which promotes itself, puffs itself up um, um, of that, that which is of the world. Amen. That God's wisdom, the Bible says, will bring the wisdom which is of this world to nothing. Amen. So, Father God, we thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord God, for satisfying us with your wisdom, satisfying us with your word, satisfying us with the Holy Spirit, satisfying us with good things, Lord, teaching us to embrace that which is right and which is good. Amen. To have an appetite for you, to hunger and thirst for righteousness, Lord God, that you promise, Lord, that if we hunger and thirst for righteousness, that you would fill us up, Lord God. If we hunger and thirst for the Holy Spirit, that you would fill us up, that you you would satisfy the dryness in our life, Lord God, you will bring us into that wealthy place in the spirit realm, Lord God, where there is an abundant supply of the Holy Spirit and your presence, Lord. That's our desire and where that our desire is to do your will. Thank you, Father God, for blessing us with true riches and spiritual blessings in Jesus name.